I'm standing out here by our thornless blackberries. These are the Arkansas Traveler blackberries and I say our but these are really Sam's. They're his pride and joy and I noticed a couple of them are starting to redden. Look at this one's pretty large and we saw flowers producing. Now these will continue to flower until a really hard frost hits and they're almost always green. Um, sometimes their leaves get this color when they're young leaves or whenever um, they get a little older but they do really well. Now a lot of this, all of this woody growth is last year's growth. So these are our primacane variety. They'll produce on their primacane, which is first year growth, and floricanes, which is second year growth. Whereas some um, berries, you have to wait until the second year to get a crop. And if you battle with aphids or something that causes your um, plants to be damaged, it can really reduce the amount of cropping you get. If I wanted to, I could cut these down at the base every winter and they would just um, pop back up and produce fruit the following summer. But I don't do that completely. I did cut these back a lot because they were starting to kind of take over. Now these are a bush plant, but if you don't cut them in a way that they form into a bush, they will continue to grow. And while they're not true vines because they don't have anything to grasp onto the trellis with. I've kind of weaved these through as they've grown around. I can see just how long they've got and just how much fruit it's produced all along this, which is really cool that they have the potential to produce this much fruit. And this is all on last year's growth. This doesn't include the growth that's gonna come from this year and continue to produce, produce till frost. Now, we didn't get near this amount of growth last year at all or this amount of fruit production should I say but we've had these berries planted for two years so they're four years old and they'll produce for another 10 plus years easily as long as they're taken care of so you can kind of see we have the grapevines here and everything else doing its own thing they're all kind of growing together this one's growing up really tall it's taller than I am and so there's a lot going on. It's really cool that this early in the year, it's... Yeah, there's sausage and eggs cooked in the fridge, but it's kind of a mix for burritos. <laughs> oh. Well, go look. Everyone's always hungry here. They're growing good, so you'll hear them come and ask me questions. They're always, I've said this before, they're always really close by. So Sam is actually the one that grows these, my youngest son, and uh, he's very serious about it. And I think they're a great crop for kids because they're not thorny and they can come and pick and be a part of it. The biggest thing I say watch out for is bees because the bees seem to love this plant, especially honey and bumblebees. And bumblebees get a little cranky when you're disturbing them. So I get a little nervous coming out here because I've been stung by bees, and I do not want to be stung by a bumblebee, let me tell you. And speaking of bees, it's actually one over here on this flower right now. So, and the cool thing about these is they produce both white flowers, like this, and these gorgeous pink flowers, which are actually one of my favorites. Uh, look at that. Isn't that amazing? I had never seen a pink flower on a blackberry before until these plants. And the crazy thing is that um, the plants can produce both. Like one plant can produce both pink and white flowers, which surprised me because I thought, okay, some would produce pink and some would produce white, but it seems to be a mix of them. So I never know what kind of flowers we're going to get. And here's kind of the first stage of the flower. After the petals, you know, this one's not open yet. And then after the petals drop off, this is what happens. It looks really cool. And then all of these berry, this actually forms into one large berry. And so a berry flower, instead of having one ovary or one fruit, these are actually multiple ovaries that kind of fuse together to create a berry. And then you end up with fruit like this. And you can kind of see it in the middle forming right there, which is really cool. And then we have the new growth of the blackberries. So this year's growth, and unlike last year's growth, so that last year's growth is going to be really woody and established. This year's growth can be even bigger than last year's growth, but look at it. It's very gentle, uh, very 
I don't know why I said gentle. <laughs> it's very fragile. You could just snap this in half. It, it you know, it, it almost doesn't look like a berry. It almost kind of reminds me of like an okra plant when it first starts, but you could literally snap this in half. It's just full of juice and everything else. I don't want to do that because I don't want to damage the plants, but so technically you could take out this year's growth or last year's growth, dig some of this up, and then you have a whole new berry plant, which is really cool. It's just kind of sending up, um, new plants through the rhizome and sometimes they're attached to the old plants but it is a really good way to get new plants I think and it seems that every year the new growth comes back thicker and bigger than the previous year so this is probably the biggest I've ever seen new growth and it's actually really cool how fast it's grown and taken over so you can kind of see how fast these plants will shoot up and take over an entire bed and it's actually why we have so many blackberries on our property because over the winter I was able to come in here and take multiple cuttings and or plants that have shot up and transplant them to different areas of our yard um, which created more fruit for us and look at this all of this crab grass hiding underneath the berries and turnips is starting to seed and I do need to come through here and weed, but right now I'm going to take all those tops off because I don't want them to germinate more plants. They're everywhere. Uh, these turnips never really grew back after the last harvest video I made with them, so it may be time to go ahead and start something new. And look, see, I told you there's a little lettuce hiding under there. <laughs> So here's one that didn't really develop well, but it is already almost ripe. I know that everyone will be really excited to start trying out these berries and you can kind of see the different sizes. They grow to be really big. Some of these fruit are almost the size of my thumb, which I'm excited about. And so here's kind of the bottom part where it's coming up and you can see it's, you know, this is the new growth and this is the old growth. So. This is the old growth. This is also a new growth plant, and here's the old growth. So there's actually like three plants stemming off from the same area um, because the roots or rhizomes have pushed up all of these new plants. So that's why people, especially when they have the thorn varieties that trail off, they say they can hardly get rid of them because they keep popping up new plants underground where the roots have traveled that you can't see. And so I'm a big advocate for the thornless blackberries. Um, they also seem to be a little more hardy and disease resistant. A lot of times the trailing blackberries are susceptible to diseases from dewberries, which are also kind of like blackberries, but they're native to our state and they produce everywhere. You see them all over the roadsides and everything like that. But they carry a lot of diseases. And so I was worried with the more trailing varieties of thorned blackberries. For one, they would get more pests and diseases from the native plants. And two, my uh, kids would get stuck with them when they were trying to harvest. And after a while, kids just kind of lose interest in plants when they're constantly getting poked and prodded by them. So, uh, you know, that's just something to consider if you want your kids to be involved. And also, it's not fun to be walking by and getting poked by them. So, if you look at this, this is old growth wood. And you can see where it's had some frost and stuff hit it over the last year. But, um, it's actually producing new growth on it as well. So, it's really cool kind of how these plants work. Uh, I cut these way back over the winter just because I wanted to kind of train them to be more bushy. Um, this year I'm probably going to just let them go um, and see how much we can produce off of these plants next year. But I definitely say like it seems every year we're getting more and more growth. I can't imagine how much fruit production we get from say seven or eight year old plants. It's got to be pretty incredible. I keep hearing that at some point fruit production kind of falls back, but I would like to see it for myself. Now, I also, let's see, I wanted to show you guys this. This is not frost damage. These did not suffer damage from the frost, but this right here 
is damage from those nymph footed bugs which are just baby stink bugs and what they do and aphids do this too they get on your plants and they suck out the juices now those leaf footed bugs i've made videos in the past especially shorts where they're just covered on the berries i have not seen them on my berries but i know they're present because i recognize this damage and it's hardened from where they've got on there and where their mouth parts sucked out the juice and a left some disease and also you know damage the plant by eating it so that's something to kind of watch out for they're little orange and black bugs a lot of the time and uh they can do some serious damage you know i usually leave them because it seems that they don't i'll smush them with my hands but i don't spray for them because it seems that you know with a good variety in your garden kind of a permaculture style it invites more pest um control bugs like lady beetles and also small birds and things that will eat those insects which is really nice i prefer not to spray if at all possible and also um i like low maintenance in reality i don't have time to constantly be out here on top of everything 24 7 so having plants that kind of provide for themselves really helps out now these plants seem to to get out of control really fast because they grow so quickly and so they walk in the walkways so i would just come through and clip it off if it's in your way and it's pretty easy to kind of get out of the way and then the bonus is that you can go ahead and push those plants into the ground and they will re-root into a new plant now when the new plant roots out what you want to do is any flowers or berries that try to produce go ahead and clip those off um, for the first three or four months that way it'll focus on growth and root development and then let it flower because there's no harm in letting it flower later in the year after it's developed some roots because these will continue to flower and develop all year long until a hard freeze hits and then it'll just kind of make them dormant for a month or two until the weather just gets above that freeze level. Now I think it's also important to note here's some more of that new growth. Look how much it's grown. I mean my fencing holding these up are almost is four feet tall so it's incredible that these are almost four feet already and that's just started growing. And here is a, one that I cut all the way back because it did have some presence of disease. And so this is all new growth. So we'll still get berries from this. will be later in the season. And you can see just all of that growth. And look, this is the old growth right here. And it's not as woody, but you can see it's flowering, which I'm going to take that off because I want this plant to focus on growing. So these are all the plants that I cut way, way, way down. Here's some more new growth, and then here's one. I cut a lot off of it, but it's still doing really well. And so I absolutely adore these blackberry plants, and I really wanted to show them off because there's so much going on with them right now. And then you can see in between them, I have these strawberry plants, and I also planted some Chandler strawberries. So the idea is that for now, I'll be intercropping with whatever I can fill it with but over time strawberries and blackberries have the same needs and need slightly acidic soil and so here's one of those Chandler strawberries I planted it down there and hopefully the Chandlers will vine off and produce more plants that will completely fill these beds and over time it will be strictly just berry beds strawberries on the bottom blackberries on top and I think that's a really great way to maximize your space by growing up high with the blackberries and down low with all of the strawberries and still getting the amount of berries we need because we have a large family and so four or five berries may work for one person um four or five berry plants that is but it's definitely not going to work with us so we need several in order to make this work So that's kind of what's going on with our blackberry plants. I know I show them a lot in passing, but with everything going on, I really just wanted to kind of show, you know, 
them specifically do a video just about what's going on with them and everything else and then I want to show this I should probably make a separate video on that but I'm not going to right now now this one has berry production because it is last year's wood but these can easily be picked off but if you notice the leaves up here are growing this way and the leaves down here are growing in a different direction and that's because this plant has actually managed to get into the soil and if you pick it up it has some roots developing um, these are really fine roots kind of developing and so it's starting to grow in a different direction because it's creating a different plant and then if you wanted to you could come through and clip this off right here pull off the berries and let it continue developing roots and it will have a whole new plant and likewise look at this um, this plant is way far off from the other plant. Here's the other plant way over there, and this one's over here. So what's happened, and actually it's kind of split right there. It's actually shot up and created a whole new um, berry plant, a blackberry plant, which is really cool. So you can see kind of all the different ways you can produce it by just cutting it off, sticking it in the soil, sticking it in the soil while it's still attached to the plant and letting it produce roots and cutting it off. Or just digging up these new growth in plants and with some roots attached and planting it somewhere else. They're so easy to propagate. We started off with eight and now we have uh, 20 plants, not including all of this new growth that's up here that we don't have beds for or places to kind of separate it off into more uh, blackberry beds. Uh, the, maybe in the future, I'd like to maybe put these all around the perimeter of different gardens and of our yard. I think that would be really gorgeous, especially along the fence line. And it's a great way to maximize food production. You can never have enough blackberries, jam, eating fresh pies, freezing, there's dehydrating, freeze drying. There are just so many different ways you can eat them. And so I really encourage you to try this. Now, I don't know exactly where all they grow. I'm in zone 9A, but I know that they're actually um, can grow up. I think I've seen them as high as zone five and it could be higher, but don't quote me because I really don't know. You know, so I think that's something to kind of look around and explore for yourself and see if these berries will work for you. Um, I really, really recommend them. I love this berry. So thank you guys for kind of joining me and listening to me ramble on about <laughs> all the different aspects of this blackberry plant and just how much we enjoy them and how well they're doing. I'm so excited to share more with you as they continue ripening over the season and showing you you know the fruit that we get i can't do like because they ripen at different stages i don't think we'll have a video of us just coming out harvesting them all at once and realistically i think these kids are gonna come and pick them before i have a chance to harvest look sam yeah. this berry right here look at it it's starting to turn red already do you see it yeah i see it are you excited yeah sam's the one who grew most of these so he's really ecstatic be careful because behind me there's an ant pile yeah and it's kind of gone into the walkway all right guys well i'm gonna let you go um i hope this kind of helps you out if you have any questions about this variety of blackberries but i'm really excited if you look back in my other videos about this plant and you can see just the difference in growth from the last couple of years Mom, can you say next to the swings after you're done? yeah sure you want to play on the swing? Yeah. I think you need to go change your clothes first. And uh, just see how the fruit production just continues to increase, which I'm pretty excited about.